Okay, uh, guys, back on the bench here, and I have uh, some kind of Chinese radio, AM, FM, ZX2051. This is a kit you put together. Um, definitely the Chinese. And you know it's Chinese when you see this type of typo, the MKHZ. Mega kilohertz. And the glare from the the overhead lighting. Wow. Okay. There's that. Case. This ought to look real interesting on my shelf of wonderment. Um, of course, there's this, this stuff. Here's a, a speaker of half a watt at 8 ohms. There, there's our box of goodies, a bag of goodies, bag of parts of variation. We have a telescopic uh, antenna, FM, and the back of the box with what looks like something has been chipped off of. I'm not sure what. Oh, that's the battery holder that broke. Um... Never fear, I have super glue that I'll re repair this with. I shouldn't have to, but, well, you know how this stuff goes. The U.S. Postal Service is oh so delicate with shipping things. Um, the instructions are in a language that I'm not going to be able to read, but I will get the gist of it for parts, values, and placement on the board. I'm a tend to be a little smarter than most when it comes to radios especially radios and like this little simple am fm uh let's see what is it sa bipolar transistor it's a resistor it's capacitors it's going to be our am loop that's a uh, electrolytic that I am pretty certain is a resistor color code, and this is a schematic based around a CXA 1691BM integrated circuit. It is a surface mounted circuit. I will be soldering that on first, probably more or less off the camera. Of course, we're not going to go through a continuous run of building this because it's going to take me a little while to do it. So I'll put parts on cut the video put parts on and go through what i've done and etc etc this is our printed board component side here and solder side here this is where our integrated circuit goes um interest oh here's pin one right there it's also marked over here so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to mark pin one on this side of the board with a marker of sort if i could find one on this mess of a bench of mine just something that will let me know where number one is there's a little ink dot i know you probably can't see any of that it also kind of tells you on the uh, board layout here that this will be Let's see. Okay, this is a soldery solder side and pin one is going to be here. Okay. I don't know. Do these these don't have the brakes in them like the AM one? Okay. So first thing we'll do is put the integrated circuit on. Here, my soldering iron should be warm enough now. I gotta go get the sponge. I'm going to keep this up here. I think first I probably need to sort the parts. So we'll uh, open this up and and we'll go out. Go for it from there. Let's move a little misprinted sticker or speaker board up there. Kind of just... Uh, Okay, here's our loop antenna for the AM. 
Apparently. Okay, we got our jumper lead wire. This is, of course, the cheapest of Chinese wire. I'm not sure if I even want to use this stuff or use my own. Uh, this is... I know that's for the bar and that's for the bar antenna. It was like so. That's the AM bar. Here's some kind of uh, probably a quality control inspection thing. There, here's our dial sticker, and here's our dial. More so, that'll probably go in there like that. Here's our volume dial knob. Here's our tuning capacitor, the AM FM. You can tell it's got a dual, it's a quad slug dual uh, deal for AM and FM. That's what that is. Here is our integrated circuit. Okay, we look like we have a little bent pin here. I hope that doesn't break. This is the CD1691CB, which is a different number that is printed on here. This is CXA 1691, but these are the same. 1691 is the same part, different revision type. So have that. <coughs> this thing here, this integrated circuit, controls everything within the AM, FM radio, the IF, uh, PLL, and this is the PLL crystal. You see 455B on it. That is 455 kilohertz. This is the oscillator PLL stuff. And we have some tuning slugs and IF sections. There, here is our volume potentiometer. We'll put that over here with the bigger parts. We've got capacitors here. Electrolytics. Kind of trying to sort these out a little bit in kind of a way that that I know they're going to work. This is a battery terminal. Okay. Um, if I'm missing any parts, I do have parts, you know, of course, you know, <laughs> in boxes here. So these are all electrolytics. And the important thing about these is that they go in the right direction. Okay, we'll put you... I really need something, a separator to put them in, but I don't have up here. Um, there's another battery spring. These are our battery contacts here. Um, this big one here goes where that broke piece of plastic was. I got to glue it back. Let's put it up here by the, in the case. Uh, this one has a headphones, a uh, headphone jack. This is a, looks like a stereo jack, but I don't know if the radio is actually in stereo. This is going to be the AM FM selector switch. And here's some little bits and bops here. I'm not sure what these are for. Probably to hold the speaker in. Or the case, here's our AM FM selector switch, uh, actual switch cover. And that goes on that like so. Put that up here with the switch. Uh, tiny screws, um, pan head Phillips type screws so it's more uh, zinc plated stuff here this looks like the chip uh, one of the chip oscillator deals here put that over by the rest of this stuff here hmm. what is this this is a grounding ring this more more likely this hooks the fm antenna rod onto the the cable to it. Uh, here's a pre-turned, a couple of pre-turned uh, coils here. Put them with the coils and we'll put the screws in this part of the case. We have a red LED, which I may actually put a blue LED in. Let's scrub that one. Uh, we have ceramic caps. Uh, here's another one of those resonating uh, deals there. 
get the resistors out and we'll be left with the ceramic disc capacitors I haven't seen any diode yet but I think all of that detection and everything is handled in the chip itself so and we have a pile of ceramic discs so I'm going to move those to the side and pull the integrated circuit here the wires there the board is here on these integrated circuits uh, just like any other one the little dot indicates pin 1 and pin 1 I have marked on the board I also marked it on my paperwork and I'm going to show you guys a little trick for these things hold on I forgot the super glue Of course I can't. So I'll be right back. Okay, and I am back, and I'm gonna go on and try to repair this plastic that broke. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. We should go in about like that. Um, I do have this super glue stuff here. Hopefully, I won't make too big of a mess. Hopefully, this is not hard. Oh, God. Damn it. That's why I don't like this crap. I see it's already made a mess. I wasn't even trying. And it just squirted everywhere. Christ. This is probably never going to work. Um... Try to get it as straight as possible and just kind of see how much of a mess I can make here. This stupid stuff. I hmm. Okay, I'll set that off to dry. And the trick with the IC. You could put a little dot of this on the bottom and then put it on the board. And what that'll do is it'll actually hold it once it, if it ever bonds, but it'll hold it down. Well, maybe not right there, but it, it'll, uh, It'll help to hold it in place when you're soldering it down. And it's one of those radio shop tricks that it just takes it a minute to to catch it. <clears throat> and that just let that dry. And it's always important to clean this off with something. Of course, I, I find it. Of course, finding a rag in this place is impossible. I'll just use this grease rag. Fuck it. <laughs> Always clean these off and try to set them straight up onto something so they don't leak back down and seize the top up and. I don't guess that's ever going to actually bond itself down. It doesn't act like it wants to. I mean, it will eventually, but... Hmm. Every time I move it, it moves it off of its padding. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what we can make of this. <clears throat> I think I'm going to assume that this thing has a 10.7 FM and a 455. Yeah, 4, 465. Surely that's a uh, typo. Okay, here we go. 
I don't know if you can see any of this, but we got 10.7. Where'd I see it? Where did I see it? There's 465, but I got a 455 oscillator uh, element here. Oh, here's 10.7 here. So there's 10.7. Where's my pen now? My marking pen is here. 465 and 10.7 right there. Um, <clears throat> I'm assuming these are part numbers. L2 FM, L1 FM. Um, man, you want to read Chinese? <laughs> well, I will definitely figure it out. Okay, there's our transformers here. Problem is, which one is what? I don't want to put these on. I think. This is number one, the black one. Um, L2 5.5 T1. Okay, there's one there. Here's T2. It's that indicator. Mm is 2. Okay, this is T2 here, the red. And I figured that out because I'm looking at this symbol right here matches with 2. Oh. Matches with 2. And this T1 is obviously black, but it has no no deal. So this is T2. T2. And this black one will be T1. I'm pretty sure my super glue is not dry. Oh. Oh, it is. Well, it's drier, drier, you know, it's dry enough. Um. Okay, so now where does T1 and T2 go? <laughs> uh, Lordy, Lordy, we're not going to worry about T1 and T2 goes right just yet. I want to get this integrated circuit on. So to save time, cut the video and I'll get that on. Okay, if done right, it should be on there something like this. Um... I know it's not factory beautiful, but pin one aligns with one, and it's on there. Now, other people have built these online and I always put on the big parts first. I'm going to put on the small parts first because I don't want to have to be trying to put parts in, digging around, you know, things like this if they're in close proximity, trying to put in a resistor or something. So I'm going to put bit small bits on first like these ceramics um okay we got all the discs on we're gonna start putting in the electrolytics it looks like um the electrolytics are the ones that light little cans here and these are important to get these right you have a stripe on them that are negative and there's a, sh a mask on the board a shaded area that is we represent the negative so they'll go in something like that I don't think that goes in that position but okay <clears throat> these are measured in microfarads 10 volts 220 10 volts 220 there's a 10 10 UF 25 volts uh, some brand I've never heard of 10 microfarads, here we go. C8. 
is here and that's how that goes in I want to push him down I'm going to kind of bend this so it'll sort of stay and then I'll solder it on Just a dab, but do you? Straighten that one back up. Sort of this one. I like doing the pins straight. I don't like them bent over in case I need to remove them later. Remove a part later. I don't have to wrestle it out of a hole. It'll just come out. So cut the legs, and it's on like that. So I'm gonna go and do these. And we should start getting into the interesting stuff after this, the uh, filters and transformers and things. All right, got the electrolytics in. I went on and put these uh, coils in too while I'm here. Um, while I was on it. Now, these I may have to spread apart to help tune the IF in once I get it all together. Speaking of IF, I think we'd put on the IF uh, bits. Um, let's see, I've got that, I've got that. There's 10.7. Here is the 455, and not sure what this one is. 10.7A, 10.7G. These are part of the FM. And here's our AM oscillator here 455 so now those CF3 let's see CF1 is 10.7 and CF2 is this one Let it go in there. Something like that. Alright, so that's a three and a three. And CF3 is down in there. This is the other one. So I'm going to put this one in first. This is like a little crystal resonator type deal for 10.7. It drops in there. Let's see if I can't tack it in there with a little solder just to hold it. Okay. That should be good to go for that one. Cut the excess leg off of it. Okay. Next will be we have our 455, which is CF2, which is on the outside, but I'm going to put the 10.7 in first because I don't want to be wrestling around with it too much. <laughs> So, I'm just kind of put a little bit of solder on there. It's not the cleanest thing, but I'll clean it up there. Do the final. There's that one, that one, and that one. these legs down and we'll put our 455 in this thing keeps saying 465 in the instructions which is kind of an odd number but this little oscillator is showing 455 maybe maybe Chinese radios need 465 I don't know an American ones need it shouldn't matter. It's only that little bit off. 
which I don't think it would matter too much. But we'll see. We'll see what happens when we get it all together and power it up. Hopefully this thing will hold the batteries. It seems to be uh, back together. Hopefully I'll be able to hold the batteries in. Okay, now we can put our AF cans on. <coughs> um, that is T3. This is T1. Actually, that was T2 goes here. So here's T2. I got it marked. T2 in, in my hand. Bend the little tabs out. What do you think? In about 40 years, this will develop silver mica disease. <laughs> I doubt it. They don't make them out of that anymore. Maybe the little capacitor inside will go bad. Doesn't really matter with these. A piece of solder. I'm gonna roll of solder here. I'm using a leaded solder to commemorate this Chinese radio. 6040. There's T3, the black one. Gotta go over here. that all well, those are on these are headphone adapt uh, jack I wonder if this really is stereo I don't think it is I think it's going to be manual In fact, I'm pretty sure it's mineral mono because of that trace right there. There's the ground and there's that trace. Oh, that's the speaker. Which begs them, begs them. I'm kind of wondering, does this even break the circuit? There's three volts positive. That's going to be one of the red wires. There's an LED. I'll put that in later. I'm not ready for the LED just yet. There's the AM FM switch. Which should be just fine right there. All the interesting bits start to go in. <laughs> Tack down one. Let's try to level it up. Okay, that's on. 
Oh, a good part gave me so much trouble earlier. It's this one. Try to straighten these up a little. Yeah, that's looks good. This is the volume and power switch. And I'm pretty sure that this switch is negative. In fact, yeah, it switches the negative on. Okay. And then we have our big tuning deal capacity. Put it on. Okay. Boy, my back hurts. <laughs> Interesting to note that these two need to go together. These two little bits here. We'll make sure all this is straightened up and you know good to get ready to go. Oh. Looks like that one's bent a little bit. So does it matter which way it goes? Usually I don't think it matters which way it goes. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it's all the same. Okay. I just need to make sure that it didn't have to go a certain way around. This is probably going to be one of the more difficult parts to actually get in because there's seven legs that need to go. And all of this. I mean, I can, yep, yeah. go, come on, straighten up. These I'm going to bend over because reasons. FM antenna there. this solder I don't want it to come loose got to put the screws in somehow okay this tuning capacitor a and C. Maybe that's the bar antenna. Yeah, that's the bar antenna. A, B, C. Where's the other one at? D at? There's three volts negative and positive. Hmm. Uh, 
I'm going to assume that the bar antenna goes like this, maybe? It's kind of neat. Or does it go like this? Hmm. Here's the guts. Um, oh, here's the yes. Okay, so that's <coughs> excuse me. Okay, it sits there. Interesting how this doesn't want to line up. There's a stud with a screw deal there. Okay, bar antenna, I bet, goes like that. It mounts like that. It's got to. Not much of any other choice. It's, it's got to go that way. Okay, do we even have a screwdriver, Andy? Okay, so that that makes some kind of sense, I guess. Um, loosen that one back up. Man. Can't get too crazy with this because this big dial here. Hmm. It goes like that. Okay. This is a dial sticker. I'm not going to worry with it right now. And I'm going to put this screw in. And it's crooked. What the hell? Why? Oh, I didn't cut the lead off of it. That's why you cut the legs off of everything. These little coils, the legs are sticking up too high. It's also why you bend the tuning capacitor leg over. Alright, let's see where we at. Dial now. That's about right. It still won't like go one way. I don't know why it's doing that. Huh, maybe it's got something in it. Just don't tighten it down too hard. <laughs> okay, now the uh, power on and off deal here. I didn't put the LED in, I know. That one's got a tiny screw. Goes in it. Okay. And that's that's really weird. That's not one to. Hmm. Well, I guess probably has something to do with this plastic piece here. It's it's not rubbing. It's just sitting sideways. It's kind of annoying.
Okay, real quick, I found a typo on the uh, circuit board. I'm putting in the bar antenna. We have A and C on this side, and where it looks like B on this side, but if you look at the schematic, the uh, board layout, from the solder side, you'll see there's A and C, and over here it's D. It's not B, it's D. And how to figure out where the bar antenna goes is you have to look at this schematic. The bar antenna is T1 on the schematic right here. A to B is your bar. A to B, B is a tap, C is a tap. B and C on the bar are already together and looped back on and you solder them into C. This should be two leads going in from the tap. The small portion of this coil is going to D, which is IC pin 10, which is right here by this AM FM switch, which on the board is labeled B, but that's an error. And the remaining uh, piece of wire A goes over to A. And I'm going to secure this with some of this, since this is Chinese. So I'm just going to kind of put some down here just to hold it so it doesn't shift around, so the bar doesn't shift or the actual uh, coil doesn't shift around too much. There we go. And that should do it. I'm just kind of kind of hold it. I'm not going to like dress it all in hot snot. Just enough. I still got to put this LED in. I'll do that. Um, it's almost all together. Uh, still got a little battery clips in. I mounted this speaker. I'm not real sure if this is how this goes, but it's how it fits. Um, that that's put that in. I still got to put these in and tack the wires on. Um, the LED kind of poke up through there, but I need to measure to see just oh, excuse me how far. And it's got to go because oh, here we go. Let's put this on here. Let's see if we can't get this lined up and in here. Already, there's going to be problems. I can see it with the speaker. This man. Huh. So this has got to go in. This has got to go in on this side of the. Uh, huh. Oh, interesting. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get the LED in there. I don't even know if I have the LED on right to begin with. I just stuck it in just to, so I can kind of guide this board down. There's a screw that holds this board, but I'm not sure. Yeah, the LED is not even lining. Nothing's lining up here. Oh, it's not even in the groove. There's that. Hmm. Interesting. Kind of pushing that over just to see what oh what happens there. Huh, 
I'm not real sure about this LED business. I don't know how that's even going to play into to even remotely working right because I've also got to move this speaker. I got it. You know what? I'm going to do away with this. These little mounts that really don't do anything but irritate me. And I'm going to just glue this speaker down while I got the hot glue gun out. I'm just going to do a china on it. Just bathe it right there in hot glue on both sides of it. Because this, these damn mounts, they're not going to hold this speaker in very well. It, it's just not going to work. Um, that'll hold that. I'm still not sure where this LED has to go in relation to... At first, I'm going to figure out the polarity of it because the pins are different sizes. Just bring the voltage up. It operates at 1.8 volts. Wow. All right, which way does it go then? Hmm. It still doesn't tell me which way it goes. Well, it does, but since it's going in backwards, it's kind of weird. So this thing is switching negative. So that means the positive is there. Okay, now I got it. Wow, this thing is really throwing me off. one of those backwards deals where the LED is mounted on the other side of the board. And now i got to try to clip these leads down off here without hurting anything else. Okay, in theory, when I turn this on, this is all theory, of course. I need to put the tuning knob back on the radio. All in theory. This is the dial sticker. But I can't get off of the what in the hell? China, China, China. <laughs> I can't get the dial sticker off of the Oh, there it goes. Power of knife compel you. This thing has a groove in the uh, knob. But I'm assuming that the little dial sticker is to, to kind of help see that better. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but it'll do. Okay, this whole assembly, I think, goes like something like this. It's got a... It's got a groove that goes in. And then it should... 
Oh, the LEDs can't be going down. I think the hardest part's going to be. There yeah, we go. So this is what we got. Of course, we're backwards here. Jesus, and backwards on the dial. Okay, I can fix that. When you're backwards on the dial, just take it out, flip it over. Um, actually, to be absolutely fair, this dial stick that there. I'm gonna move this, do it my way because okay, that's all the way down. That's there. That should be all the way down there bottom end of the dial something kind of like this I'm not gonna stick it all the way on just yet so tuning it up should <laughs> wow that went out of the band real quick Ooh. that should be straight up so this actual dial knob doesn't go to this design radio, it appears. It's going that way and the actual pointer's got to be that way. That's interesting. That's really interesting. So that should... Because this sets in like this, and this sticker here has got to be, you know, on the outside of the radio. Let's get this off. This is the, the dial itself. It goes here. So you got to be able to see that thing in there. Okay. Now well, it's starting to make sense a little bit. If I can only get it together without breaking something, we'll be in business. Okay. Oh. Uh, the LED is kind of poking through. Let me push it in some more in the soldering iron. This is what I was talking about earlier. The LED is just it's going to be one of those deals where it's not going to want to cooperate fully with me. an ultimate dick so I'm gonna push the LED all the way down and I'll see what happens it's probably gonna look stupid but what do you expect you know what do you want from Chinese radio <laughs> I would like to kind of help hold all this together but I don't think that's ever going to happen mm. okay, I'm not sure what just broke I don't like how it's, I don't like the position of that LED, it doesn't, I don't like that. It's too American for you. Okay. Okay, so now... I should be able to put the only screw that holds the circuit board in. Nope. The little stand doesn't match. 
That little stud's not lining up with the hole, it's crooked. This screwdriver, is this a better deal? No? Yes, maybe. All boards crooked now. A funky LED. Oh, I cut it. Oh, whatever. Okay. That's antenna. That's goes to here. Okay. Um, that's that, 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 okay. Okay, we'll hook this on. Use our traditional J hook. That. Down there, and we'll solder, solder the little wire on, like so. Okay, that goes in there like that. This is stuck to the table. This is going to go under. that and this screw here everything is in Chinese this screw will go here somehow it'll go there I'll be able to tighten it down. There, maybe. No, it's not grabbing. Don't grab. It's cross cross threading. Jeez, what really? Are you kidding me now? It's not even grabbing this thing. What is wrong with this? <coughs> There it goes. There's our aerial. Like that. This is negative. This is barely long enough to get to the negative terminal. Which is maybe this one. Barely long enough. Wow. It's quite amazing. All right, let's put something on her to hold it. Slide around. Hmm. Oh, wow, that negative is like. The negative line is so short. It's positive and much better. It's a little better, but not much. If the LED comes on, I'll be happy.
I'll call it an achievement. If I can't mash this down a little more, okay. Yeah. Okay, a pair of batteries. That's perfect. The sound of the batteries falling over. No, it's going to fall over. That's not what I was going for. Everything came out. Wow. Every one of them. Every one of them. Something falls over and everything came out. A pair of batteries. Oh, is this off? Make sure it's off. LEDs. Oh. oh, the LED tells you when you got a station. Okay. Okay, the LED fire came on. Fire. <laughs> the LED came on. So that means that it's working somewhat as intended. Next will be to solder in the speaker. That one more. I like how this thing holds heat. Okay, now I gotta fix these wires so they're not getting in the way of switches and coils and things. So, this is another place the hot snot gun comes in handy. Power wires I'm not really worried about. They're not going to get too much in the way. Okay, now a little AMFM switch. Here. That. This I'm going to. Actually, no, not that. I'm going to put the super glue on it. And watch me make a mess of it once again. There you go. That's too much. Oh shit, it's gonna get in there and stick the... I'm kind of afraid that it's gonna get down in there and stick in the switch and jam it. This thing even sticks onto the batteries and
<laughs> it works. <laughs> Don't know what channel I'm on station. Working that switch, I don't want it to seize up. So I might be done with a soldering iron. I'm gonna turn it off. Next would be trying to align this thing. Wow. Where's my there it is. So I'm gonna get the alignment stuff set up and I'll be back. Okay, I'm gonna try to align this. What I got signal generator set 465. And you can hear it kind of. There's only two slugs here. And I'm going to use this before anybody blows a nuclear gasket saying, Are you going to break the slugs using a metal? No, I'm not. I've been doing this long enough to know, to know better. Basically, there it is. Wow, that's kind of rough. Continuation down up or whatever. That's, that's a modulation. Way too much. Okay. when it comes into a station it's gonna do that so Ooh. 
Alright, well, that's a um, okay. Seems to be kind of as good as I'm gonna be able to get that. So, up to FM. dial sticker on. I don't even know where on this dial it. Okay. What is this? Is this double sided tape? What is this? It doesn't want to I don't know what that was on there but it doesn't have much for stickiness so I can always fix that. It's supposed to be double sided tape, but it's made in China. <laughs> it's not very uh not very good. That one. So I'm just gonna kinda get all that off. That one there was worn out. It didn't have any stick left on it. So what I'm going to do is we'll bring out the glue again and I'll just kind of give it a little bit kind of like this I guess. And then, uh, come on. I'm going to try to stick it on that way. So, I know there's a station right in here, 98, why isn't it working now, oh battery, eh. battery doesn't like to stay in does it? Oh yeah, it's way off. It's way off tune. So, I need to tune the tuning capacitor to fix that. I need a reference. Oh, I get a copyright strike from that shit. Oh, look at that. The sticker shifted right there, and the glue was hardening up. How about that? The asshole. I just broke it. I'm going to leave these like going on and off. Okay. Yeah, the dial. That's down there. Well, this is just fucking beautiful. The dial is broken now. You know, it works. Whatever. The dial is screwed up, of course. You know, I expect nothing less from China. The batteries won't stay in. The magnet keeps pulling them out.
Look at that, it won't stay together. Nope. Look at that, it's weird. Hmm. The antenna lead is... That won't stay together. Well, I broke the dial. The LED's broken. Look at that. You can't even get to that. You can't even switch the... AM and FM around when you got the case on. What the hell? They turn that off. There's nothing on AM here. I know there are stations, but there is nothing. Okay, I kind of broke the AM functionality of this radio along with the dial plate. The switch had just disintegrated itself when I was trying to switch it over to do a test on the AM side. So I went on and took the pliers and pulled it out. It kind of just fell apart. But the radio works. It only works in FM mode now, which is fine, I guess. Um, it has been educational. The case does not go together at all. Also, the little, the one and only stud that holds the circuit board has broken, and that screw fell out. It's right here. No, oh, it's right here. Excuse me. Here it is. So, like any good Chinese radio, I figured would be now would be a good time to just load this up with hot snot in every orifice that I could find to possibly hold this circuit board in, and it seems to have worked. So if it works for the Chinese, it'll work for me. Now I'm going to close this up. And I might try to salvage the dial plate. I don't think I'm going to be very lucky there. The LED seems to be working now. Although the volume knob is kind of funky now for some reason. It's a little off, but... Whatever. I can't even. Print.com today. It only picks up the higher stations. I know there's stations low, but it won't pick them up. Don't know why. Um. Can I salvage the dial plate? Can I salvage the dial plate? Probably to that extent right there. That might be about as good as I could do it without ordering a new one, which I have no idea if that's even possible. Man, these Chinese things are just 
amazingly accurate, right? Fun. Chinese manufacturing fun. Man, why is that so hard to move all of a sudden? It's in sad shape, I know that. Anyway, that's about as good as I'm gonna be able to get the dial plate. It just kind of broke it accidentally, or well, not accidentally, it was frustrating me because it cocked up over here. It's trying to do it again. What is wrong with this? Whatever, I'm not gonna mess with it. I gotta figure out why this volume knob is in a bind all of a sudden. Just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this deal here is starting to get into a bind. It doesn't make any sense why. Lay it back on the glue. This this video is going on long. Shit, don't even know if I'll post it. This is kind of embarrassing. What is wrong with this stupid, stupid knob? Hmm. I bet I could just do this. expect much from a five dollar kit china can we let's make it better let's uh <laughs> modify it make it american jeez i'm just waiting to break that off all right okay it's it's pretty much aligned like i figured it would be Wow, it's still rubbing after all that I chopped out of it. I'm going to go all the way down with it. All the way down where the, where the battery is coming out again. There's plastic everywhere now. <laughs> Violence is ensued.
<laughs> okay, it's whatever that is. Registered. I guess it works good enough. No, I don't want it. Anyway, China. China. Yeah, you know what to do with the video. <laughs>